36-year-old Ying Lei Li was a native of China, but was living in Dublin, Ireland, where she used the name Angie. In 2015, she had founded Cinderella Weddings, which provided a wide variety of services for couples getting married, and catered towards the Chinese community. She was married to 45-year-old IT consultant Daniel Belling, who was originally from Germany. The couple had two sons. On February 9, 2017, the entire family set off on an 11-day cruise of the Mediterranean on the MSC Magnifica. The cruise began in the port city of Kiriavecchia on the west coast of Italy. When the cruise ended, the ship's security measures showed that one passenger who had boarded the ship never left it. Within a few hours, they were able to determine that the passenger had been someone in the Lee Belling family. The cruise line notified police that they had a missing passenger. The police located Daniel Belling in an airport in Rome, about to board a Ryanair flight back to Dublin with his sons, but not his wife. Suspicious of the fact that Belling had not reported his wife missing, despite the fact that she disappeared partway through the cruise, the Italian authorities took him into custody. Angie and Daniel's sons, ages four and six, were placed in the care of Italian social services and were eventually released to their paternal grandparents in Germany. The last known person to see Angie outside of her family was the clerk in a souvenir shop on the cruise ship. On February 10th, the second day of the cruise, Angie had been in the shop with her two boys. According to the shop clerk, Daniel Belling had stormed into the shop and threw a pair of sneakers at his wife, telling her to put them on in place of the sandals she was wearing. The clerk said that Angie looked shaken after the encounter. For the remainder of the cruise, Daniel and the children ate all their meals on board the ship without Angie. Daniel also told the ship's housekeeping staff to stop turning down the fold-out bed in the family's 11th deck cabin because there were only three people staying in the room instead of four. Appearing before an Italian judge after being taken into custody, Daniel claimed that his wife had been on the ship for several more days after she was last seen, until the ship docked at Catacolon in Greece. He said that he and his wife had argued the night before, and she had mentioned wanting to quit the cruise. He took their sons out for an excursion in the morning, and she was not in their cabin when they arrived back to the ship later in the day. Her luggage and mobile phone were gone. Daniel assumed that Angie had left to return home to Dublin. He says that it was at this point in the trip that he told the housekeeping staff to no longer turn down the fold-out bed, not earlier in the trip, as the staff had reported. He believed his wife to either be back at their home in Dublin or with family in China. There was no record of Angie's passport being used for international travel, and she never arrived back in Ireland or in China. The family's cabin was also near a terrace that overlooked the ocean, but did not provide a relaxing atmosphere because of the loud noise of the ship's engines. It is possible that Angie's belongings could have been thrown overboard from this terrace to make it look as though she had left on her own accord. Angie's mother was not notified that her daughter was missing by Daniel Belling or the Italian authorities. She only learned of Angie's disappearance when a friend of hers who spoke English happened to see a story about the case on the internet. She was distraught over the news and was sure her daughter had not willingly walked away from her life because she would have never abandoned her children. She is also a staunch supporter of her son-in-law, however. She acknowledged that Daniel and her daughter argued frequently, but believes Daniel to be a good person who would not have hurt his wife. Angie and Daniel were described as odd by some of their neighbors, who also confirmed that the couple had a tempestuous relationship. One neighbor reported once finding Daniel sleeping in their apartment building stairwell following a fight with Angie. Daniel Belling was held in an Italian jail for 14 months while Italian authorities worked to build a case against him. When they failed to produce enough evidence to bring him to trial in relation to his wife's disappearance, he was released at the end of April 2018. He returned to Dublin and the apartment he had once shared with his missing wife. Since the apartment was being left vacant, Angie's mother had moved into the apartment just a few weeks before. She remains convinced of her son-in-law's innocence. Daniel told reporters after his release that he was sure his wife was back in China. He says he was worried about her for the first few weeks following her disappearance, but was not concerned anymore. He claimed not to be angry with her, but described her as cruel for allowing him to sit in jail for over a year. Angie remains missing. Christopher Caldwell was a father of three daughters from Virginia Beach, Virginia. 
he was engaged to be married to a woman named Crystal Tinder and had a wedding date set for July of 2005. In July of 2004, the couple went on a carnival cruise from Miami, Florida to Cozumel, Mexico. On the final night of the cruise, July 22nd, they had dinner with another couple they had made friends with during their time on the ship. Afterwards, the group had a few drinks and visited some of the ship's nightclubs. Crystal and the other couple were ready for the evening to end, but Christopher was not ready to turn in for the night just yet. He told his fiance that he was going to go to the ship's casino and would join her back in their cabin shortly. Crystal went back to the cabin alone and went to sleep. Crystal woke up at 6.30 a.m. on July 23rd. Christopher was not there, and she realized that he had never made it back to their cabin. She searched various areas of the ship on her own, but with no success. She then had him paged to the information desk, but receiving no response, she notified ship personnel that he was missing. Video surveillance showed Christopher leaving the casino at 2.17 a.m. Crew members were interviewed, and a bartender claimed to have seen Christopher on the ship's promenade deck at 3.30 a.m. He said that Christopher appeared highly intoxicated. Christopher's family has been highly critical of the bartender's decision to leave Christopher alone in such a state. Given this sighting, it was feared that Christopher had fallen overboard approximately 14 miles off the shore of Florida. The Coast Guard was notified and began searching for Christopher. However, the cruise line did not notify the Coast Guard until after the ship docked and the passengers were all gotten off of the ship, a process which took three and a half hours. According to Crystal, Carnival personnel were more concerned with getting passengers from her cruise off the ship and bringing the next group of passengers on board than they were with looking for Christopher or getting help from the Coast Guard. The Coast Guard performed an exhaustive search of the area, but found nothing. When Christopher went missing, he was eight days shy of his 37th birthday. No sign of Christopher has ever been found. 47-year-old Fariba Amani was a mother of two adult children from Port Moody, British Columbia. In February 2012, she went on a cruise on the Bahamas Celebration, a ship operated by Celebration Cruise Lines, with her boyfriend of eight months, Ramiz Golshani. The cruise ended on February 29th, when the ship docked in Palm Beach, Florida, at 7 a.m. Ramiz awoke in the couple's cabin around the same time the ship docked, but he realized that Fariba was not there with him. He searched the ship for an hour, and then notified the ship's crew that she was missing. Ramiz says that he saw Fariba for the last time at 1 a.m. that morning in the ship's gift shop. He then went to the ship's casino by himself before returning to their cabin and going to sleep. It does not appear that he was concerned that Fariba was not there when he came in to go to bed. Customs officials confirmed that Fariba had gotten back on the ship after the cruise's stop at Freeport in the Bahamas around 8 p.m. on February 28th because she had scanned the card issued to her by the cruise line in order to get back on board. The Coast Guard launched a three-and-a-half-day search of the waters between Florida and the Bahamas. The search covered more than 10,000 square miles, but turned up no sign of Fariba. Fariba's family believes that foul play is involved in her disappearance. They say that she did not disappear willingly because she would not have left her children. Also, she was a successful esthetician, with clients and events booked for several months. Her family also says that she was not a heavy drinker, so it is unlikely that she accidentally fell overboard while intoxicated. Shortly after Fariba's disappearance, her family publicly expressed frustration with Fariba's boyfriend, Ramiz. Ramiz had never actually met Fariba's family during their relationship and would not speak with them after Fariba went missing. According to Ramiz, this was because of the extreme emotional stress he was under worrying about Fariba. In an interview on the first anniversary of Fariba's disappearance, her sister Salume clarified that the family was not accusing Ramiz of anything, but they were frustrated about the lack of communication with him because he could have potentially had important information. Ramiz told the media that he had been cleared by the FBI, but the FBI could not confirm this due to the ongoing nature of their investigation. Fariba and Ramiz did not have an ideal relationship. Fariba told her family that Ramiz was very controlling and needed to be told of her every move. She had consulted with a private investigator about surveilling Ramiz because she suspected he was unfaithful, but had ultimately decided not to hire him 
due to fears about her physical safety if Ramiz discovered she was having him followed. She considered the cruise to be one last-ditch effort to see if the relationship could work, and was prepared to end it upon their return home if the vacation did not improve things between them. Fariba's family is still fighting for answers in her case, but she remains missing. 20-year-old Blake Kepley of Fallbrook, California, was making plans for his future in 2011. He was researching technical schools and local colleges, as well as considering joining the military, trying to decide what path he wanted to take for his career. He took a break from these preparations to attend a family reunion for his father's side of the family in July. The reunion was taking place on an Alaskan cruise. The Holland America Line ship departed from Seattle on July 17th to make stops in British Columbia and various locations in Alaska. At 2.30 p.m. on Friday, July 22nd, Blake's family reported him missing to Holland America personnel. They claimed to have last seen him sometime between midnight and 1 a.m. that morning, and he had not been in his room when they woke up. The family had searched for him on their own, but could not find him on board. The ship arrived in Ketchikan, Alaska that morning, but gangway records do not show Blake leaving the ship. Fearing that Blake had gone overboard, the cruise line contacted the Coast Guard. Helicopters and boats searched an area of more than 350 miles for Blake, but found nothing. The search was formally called off late in the afternoon of the 23rd, and the ship arrived back in Seattle on the 24th. Blake's mother, Mary Larson, had been told that there was no surveillance footage of Blake. She had to wait three months before she received any information about her son's disappearance in the form of the Coast Guard report on the incident. The report did not answer many questions, however. It featured a blurry surveillance image of an individual whose face was blurred out and a few witness statements from individuals who claimed to have seen Blake, but their names had been redacted, leaving Mary with no leads to follow. Mary has gone on to advocate for passenger safety on cruise ships, but has not found any answers in her son's case. Angelo Faliva was the first chef in Sabatini's restaurant on board Princess Cruise Line's Coral Princess. The 31-year-old was a native of Cremona, Italy, and had worked for Princess Cruise Lines since 2006 on their cruises of the Caribbean. In November 2009, he was working for them on a six-month contract that finished in February 2010. The Coral Princess left Florida on November 23rd and was scheduled to make several stops before arriving in Los Angeles. On November 25th, Angelo began his shift at Sabatini's at 4.30. At 8.15 that evening, he was seen walking into the kitchen from the dining room after going out to speak with two passengers. His co-workers saw him get on an elevator that went to areas only accessible by staff. They were most often used by workers in the kitchen when they were going to dispose of garbage. Angelo never returned to the kitchen, despite the fact that his shift did not end until 10 p.m., and he was a reliable worker. One of Angelo's co-workers noticed that he was missing around 9 p.m. and told the kitchen manager about it, but the kitchen manager did nothing. Nothing was done about Angelo's disappearance until 9 a.m. the following morning. Princess Cruises claims to have no useful surveillance footage of Angelo around the time of his disappearance, and they deleted the record of passengers who ate in Sabatini's that night after Angelo's family expressed interest in contacting them to see if any of them had helpful information. While the corporate headquarters of Princess Cruises is in California, it flags its cruise ships out of Bermuda, allegedly to avoid taxes and escape the U.S.'s more stringent safety regulations. Therefore, investigating Angelo's disappearance falls under the jurisdiction of authorities in Bermuda. According to Angelo's family, they have shown no interest in investigating his case. They did not arrive on the ship until 10 days after Angelo's disappearance, and did not examine basic evidence for months. At the end of January 2010, they told Angelo's family in an email that they had not yet examined Angelo's cell phone or computer. They also only talked to one of Angelo's co-workers at the restaurant, the same one who had raised concern about his whereabouts on the night of the 25th while they were on the ship. This co-worker also shared crew quarters with Angelo and reported that Angelo had never arrived back there on the night of the 25th. Despite this, the investigators from Bermuda believed an unconfirmed sighting of Angelo on deck 7 of the ship by another crew member at 6.30 a.m. on the morning of the 26th. 
If Angelo were still on board the ship in the morning, where had he been all night? Angelo's family was eventually able to get back his computer and have it professionally analyzed. They learned that the computer continued to be used for several days after Angelo went missing. Documents were printed, files were downloaded, and emails were deleted. It is unknown who used the laptop and did all of these things. Angelo's family began receiving upsetting phone calls, insinuating that Angelo had witnessed illegal activities on board the ship and was gotten rid of by other workers on the ship, which does seem likely given the tampering with his computer. Angelo's sister Chiara continues to put pressure on authorities and seek answers about what happened to her brother, but Angelo remains missing.